Hey, Mr. Baldwin, we're back. Let's do this, Mr. Z. All right, video number two for earthquakes, and we're talking about locating the earthquake. So we've got our learning targets there, 5, 8, and 11. Make sure you go ahead and read those. Pause the video if you have to. Um, let's get started. Let's roll. All right, so a couple of definitions over here. We have the focus in the epicenter. All right, so when we talk about an earthquake, we have the focus, which is where the actual rupture occurs, and it's inside the Earth. Yeah, it's underneath the surface for the most part. Every now and then it's right at the surface. But mm -hmm. uh, for the most part, it's under the surface, and it's where basically the seismic energy radiates away from that spot. Yeah, exactly. And then the spot closest to the focus on the surface of the Earth is going to be the epicenter. And that's probably pretty... Uh, at least a, a term you've heard on the news, when we've talked about earthquakes, they talk about where the epicenter was. Mm -hmm. They usually put a dot on a map, yeah. and that's the epicenter, which is directly above the focus. So like when they show the dot on the map, that's not where the actual earthquake was. It no. was the spot of the land above where exactly. the earthquake was. Okay. Exactly. Okay, makes sense. But that would be the place where it was the strongest. Gotcha. Cool. So that's one of the questions I always have when I'm watching the news and they t say about an earthquake. Like, how do they figure out where that epicenter was? It's not like there's a big X in the middle of the road where the earthquake happened. Yeah, yeah, it isn't. And um, it's, uh, it's kind of a complicated process. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be doing it in class a couple of different ways, one through GIS and actually one with, with uh, a map and compasses. Uh, and the first thing that we're going to look at is the, the seismogram. Mm -hmm. All right, these are the vibrations that are picked up by the seismograph. And we were going to identify the S wave, the P wave, and the S wave on the seismograph. And so if we look at that distance, um, the closer we are to the epicenter, the smaller that distance or the S wave lag time is going to be. Right? Yeah, and then we'll define the lag time as the difference in time between when the P wave gets there and when the S wave gets there. Okay. Right? So the further you are away from the earthquake, right, the lag time is going to be a lot greater. So yeah. the difference between S wave and P wave arrival times is going to be greater the further we are away. Yeah. And that leads us towards step two. It's we figure out the distance between the earthquake epicenter and each of the seismic stations. And we use that P and S wave difference in time. So yeah. uh, on the graph that we see on the bottom, we can look as you move further and further to the right, our lag time is getting bigger and bigger. P and yeah. S waves are getting kind of further apart in time. Yeah, exactly, because we know how fast they are. We know how fast they travel. We're mm -hmm. able to plot that on the graph, both the S and the P wave, mm -hmm. and then we know based on the lag time, like how far away we are from there. Cool. So then from there, if we know where our seismic station is mm -hmm. and we know how far away from the earthquake we are, yeah. we can say that somewhere in a circle around our station there was an earthquake. Yeah, and if we draw one circle, it can be anywhere on that circle because okay. the seismograph doesn't tell us where it came from. Uh, it just picked up the vibration. Okay. Right? So um, if I then take the data from a second seismic station mm -hmm. and then I draw another circle, and I've got two circles next to each other, kind of like a Venn diagram. Oh, yeah. Right? I'm going to have two intersecting points there. So now I've narrowed it down from an infinite number of points mm -hmm. to just two. And then if you take a third seismogram or a seismic station, then you can figure out the intersection is one point. Yeah, exactly. And mm -hmm. where all three circles meet is where the earthquake is, and we call that triangulation. Cool. And you can see it in the picture on the right, uh, both of them actually. Mm -hmm. And we've just got three stations, three circles, one point. Exactly. Okay, so now we're talking about the depth of earthquakes, because we can actually find the depth using that triangulation. Actually, you need one more station, you can figure out the depth mm -hmm. from there. But uh, this help, helps us figure out how deep earthquakes take place. So, like, what kind of, well, let's go back, what kind of boundary are we seeing on this one? I think we see a convergent boundary, and it yeah. looks like we have an oceanic plate converging with a continental plate. And you know what? We actually know all this already, because yeah. we did it all in the last unit with plate tectonics. Mm -hmm. And on the GIS, we really looked at this in a lot of depth. And we know that that oceanic plate is subducting underneath the continental, right? And it's, and it's getting destroyed or recycled down there. And there's a lot of earthquakes that happen along those convergent boundaries. And if we were going to measure the depth of the earthquake, like from the coast moving inland, we would see that the earthquakes would get deeper. So the closer you are to that subduction zone, the shallower, shallower the earthquakes are going to be. Exactly. And then the further inland you move, the deeper they get. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. And there's uh, another type that we see when we're looking at divergent and transform boundaries. 
Yeah. Okay, these are actually just really shallow earthquakes, only about 20 kilometers deep, because there's no subduction. There's no exactly. plate driving down underneath the other one. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's it. And that's it. Cool. I think we did a good job. I think we did a great job. All right. Uh, go up over to your class website, and uh, you got a quiz ready to go, and we'll see you guys in class tomorrow. Take care.